There's people talking. I think this is from the last broadcast, though. Uh -uh. I'm gonna close the door to my office and rip it. Right. It's us. We're on the stream. Yep. Let me. Uh... And if it gets weird, we and we have to remake it or something, we can do that, Josh. If the if the internet collapses, I heard the Northeast sure. lost internet this morning, so I was wondering if that was why you were really. Yeah, someone nope. cut a fiber optic line in New York, it oh, appears, no. and it, it I... shut down a, a big portion of the grid. When I was coming, uh, when I was walking downstairs, uh, one of my housemates, Kevin, was talking about the fiber thing, but I only heard a little bit about it, and so I just made a, a joke about it and moved on. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a, I... uh, there's a meme about uh, Bane from the Batman movies and how he's actually obsessed with fiber because there's this one scene where he takes over the New York Stock Exchange. <laughs> And so he's just like a real healthy eating kind of guy. He's like making all of his henchmen like, you know, eat strawberries and, you know, high fiber diets and things like that. It's, it's very I, I love it. odd. <laughs> that seems very caring of him considering he threw a guy out of a plane in his own <laughs> <Yes>. crew. <laughs> just to make a point, not even to like, or to, as part of the disguise. Are we live? Are we talking about this live? This yeah, we are. Good. We are talking about this live. This, this is just this is good <laughs> streaming. Good stuff. Hey everybody! Hello. Uh, this, this is the. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yes, Josh, you can respond to me too. I was saying hello to the audience. Um, uh, this is uh, this is our semi-monthly monthly design chat, and um, decided we'd invite Josh on too because basically, as far as the Badgers go, the train has left my station, and Josh is working on the design uh, quite a bit right now, and. Um, uh, the, the, the impulse, the, the, the desire to answer the question of how do we make scoring different for a faction is a very complicated one. And I think that's for one where Cole and I are running out of room. I have one more faction in my notes. I could probably produce gun to my head by the end of the week, but that's about it. That's all the scoring. I know I'm out. And then I don't know what Cole's planning on doing for his <laughs> next three factions, but we'll see where he's at. Um, and so uh, Josh hit upon kind of a new concept for how the Badgers are going to score, and so we're going to talk. We're going to talk our way through that, and um, and so because of that, like I'm still involved in the design from like a like very hypothetical, like how do we get this from point A to point B level? But I think Josh has been doing the nuts and bolts of the design at this point, so. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Sorry, there won't be any worm faction. Go ahead. Yeah, no worm factions. Uh, I hope all the levels are fine. This is a reminder and also a tradition that we all need to retweet the various things that need tweeted. Oh, geez. So don't worry, commenter who asked us about if we talk about Twitter. Of course, we're going to. Um, so as we get all we we get all that stuff set up, and I will do my best to keep an eye on the um, on the on the comment threads. I think we all will. Um, so I just want to like underline stuff that Patrick said, which is that this is, you know, we're, we're going to be talking through the Badgers today, um, how they work and also like a little bit of like maybe some of the design history and some of the process stuff. Um, and then later today, uh, I'm, I'm looking at Josh, I think in particular, uh, later today, hopefully for people on the Woodland Warriors, we'll be releasing a small print and play kit uh, that is, we just have the TTS pack for, right? We don't have a physical version of this. But that's right. Yeah, you shouldn't we, be playing we, this yeah. physically anyway. Just play it on TTS. Yeah, that is pretty much done. So you will definitely see something by the end of the day. Yeah. So, so don't start. Don't start mocking up your own copies. We've got you covered. Yeah. Don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. Don't worry. Um, yeah. So we, we can kind of get into it. Um, I, I want to before we get like deep into Badgerland to talk a little bit about the prep for the Kickstarter and kind of where we're at. So. Uh, we've, we've been telling people that we are getting ready for Kickstarter soon, sometime this quarter, very soon. We haven't announced the date yet. We'll be announcing the date next week, uh, which I'm very excited about. And, uh, it, you know, preparing for Kickstarter is, is, a, is a funny thing for a studio where it used to be when we were smaller that absolutely everybody on staff had to be working on the Kickstarter in order for the Kickstarter to get done. And that's not true anymore. Uh, I'm helping out a lot with, with the Kickstarter. We'll be pulling Josh in and Patrick in, of course. But... Patrick still has space to work on other future designs now. And there are, are you know, like Nick, who will be helping with the and development. And sell a house. And, and sell a house. And Nick, who will be helping with the development of the new expansion material and who just finished the Fort expansion, uh, probably won't be touching the Kickstarter page at all. He's just going to be working on the new, the new uh, root material. So 
it's it's very interesting to be to be working right now because you can see some some parts of the studio are like heating up and kind of getting ready to start producing the Kickstarter page and getting everything set up, whereas others it's kind of business as usual. So uh, I don't know. It's it, it's strange. It's still it still feels like an all hands on deck event for for the studio, but uh, it is so much less chaotic <laughs> than the first root Kickstarter and some of those early those earlier projects. It's so much less chaotic. I keep like thinking are we missing am i missing something is everything real like yeah it's a little weird i need the chaos i guess yeah I, it, it is weird it is it is it is it's strange because each one feels less chaotic which makes it i guess a little bit less fun but also we get to sleep at night yeah i i must admit i am a little bit chaos addicted too i mean when i think it back about root i remember the like absolutely drag out nights like okay i need to make sure that i make an entirely new kit get to the right place do all the play tests come back and turn something around mm -hmm. like for the next morning and there's really not that sort of thing anymore so yeah i i agree that i love sleeping so that's nice well and one of the things that like so we have all these internal like goals that we have to hit before we do a kickstarter one of them is we have to be able to put some print and play kits in the mail to previewers but because everything is on TTS, we got like an extra couple week grace period where we don't even have to really worry about it yet. Uh, and, and that feels strange because normally I would be like scrambling right now and, and assembling things. Um, we, got, we At this point, we have a lot of like the art is already done and the design is looking really, really good. So uh, just rest assured that you'll, you'll know a lot more about the, the Kickstarter date and some things about what the Kickstarter is going to contain next week. It's coming very fast. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know. I think I think folks are really going to like some of the stuff that we're all putting together. Um, so let's should we talk about the Badgers? Should we get into it? Yeah, sure. Um, all right, Patrick, do you want to give by way of like an introduction, uh, kind of like a design history of the Badger? I didn't ask so, you to prepare anything. So no, that's fine. So no. Badgers are from Europe or from North America. Uh, European ones are very cute. North American ones are very scary. There, that's my that's my design talk. No, um, so yeah, so the mandate for the expansion from Cole um, was give me time to work on Void Lich by designing some materials. So I didn't, did that, and what he asked for was that we work on two militant, or I work on two militant factions, which was not what I was working on before then. But that's all good. We got there. And um, and so we, you know, of course, we designed the Warlord, which is coming along swimmingly. And then the Badgers, I, I started with, and the Badgers, for, I arbitrarily picked fifteen warriors to start with and started working on them on a concept with them. And of course, we start with the turtles. You know, people in the chat know that, but we started with the turtles. We moved to Badgers because of uh, art considerations. And so, uh, so I started working on uh, the Badgers, and I had a couple like I had a couple like concepts I'd been working on for militant factions. And I started bringing in ideas. And kind of cycling through them and playing test games against the bots and so i think one thing that we stuck with very early was that we wanted there to be public sharing of building space so that like whatever the badgers are doing the other players can participate in and then um this concept that they're armored and so they take one less hit in combat and we needed to make the their like that's why they have 15 pieces because they have to work around that concept that there's less of them but they, they're much more survivable. I think it's a really interesting thing when you know you can ignore one hit every combat. Uh, and that's kind of where we ended up. Um, but then, you know, as we were working, what we said was, let's build a concept where the... Let's not worry about scoring. Let's just make their concept to be like the... We started with the... Um, at first, we had this, like, outlandish, right? We had, like... The more they share resources with the other players, the more points they get, which was just not going to work. Mm -hmm. um, and then we ended up with, let's just use the birds and and have the birds victory condition the same way of uh, scoring points with them. So uh, they got points for controlling clearings, um, and that was just as an immediate intermediate step while we got the rest of them working because we wanted to. Uh, and then and then we figured we would discover uh, a way to score points out of that. Sorry, I'm being very stream of conscious right now. Is everyone okay? <laughs> yeah, everyone's good. Yeah. <laughs> you put me on the spot, Cole. Yeah, uh, yeah. The, the interesting thing about the Badgers is that, you know, originally conceptualized as a militant faction. And I feel like at least right now they kind of are in this middle space. They're like mm -hmm. almost like an inner, what we sometimes mm -hmm. call an interloper faction. 
mm -hmm. where like they have pieces, they have a good amount of pieces on the board, and they're strong. Like they take a, one less hit in every battle, so like necessarily they must be strong. But because there's generally like there, you're not going to have as many on the map as the cats or the birds or things like that. Mm -hmm. And because they're so slow, you know, they can't really police the board quite like say the mm -hmm. birds or the cats can. So they're in this interesting space right now between like an insurgent and a militant faction. They have to make a decision if they're going to police. Yeah, and so that's the other, that's, uh, Josh hit on that, that's the other side of the coin, is that um, the uh, by being armored, um, they move slowly, so when they take a move action, they can only move one badger at a time, mm -hmm. uh, which creates some interesting problems with, like, if you rule somewhere and you're leaving that place, at mm -hmm. some point you may not rule the place you're leaving anymore to be able to make the move that you're trying to complete. Um, but we have ways around it. You can put down carts and you can move your characters uh, faster that way. Um, I think you can move, put down carts. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So well, it, um, it, it's been kind of, it, that's been kind of in flux. Mm -hmm. the, the other thing I, I want to add to it is, you know, we we were thinking as this project is, has grown and we started thinking about the possibilities of like doing some two-player route and making sure these factions uh, work well uh, in, in the context of two-player route. Mm -hmm. uh, they had to uh, play off of each other. They had to be good foils, right? So the warlords have a very aggressive and kind of like spree style play where you're kind of making gambits and then like, you know, plunging into territory. And the badgers had to not just be a wall for them to hit, right? We, mm -hmm. we didn't want the badgers to just be like friction. We wanted them to interact with that and really be able to dance around what the what the warlord is offering so i think like some conceptions of the bad it's been really interesting to watch the development of the badgers kind of on the outside because i've been tying up other projects and so i, I you know i feel like i got to watch the development of the badgers in time lapse where i got like mm -hmm. every third version and they went from like the stone wall that the warlord crashes against to mm -hmm. something that really like dances with the warlord and has like a different kind of pace and different feel. I mean, they, I think in, in some respects they're like the inverse of the warlord, but it, it, it's that they have this just very different way of interacting with, 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 with the board. Uh, and, and I think it will, it will lead to some really good uh, two player games. Uh, and then the last thing before we like show you guys what, what, what they're doing and talk through the rules in detail um, that I want to say, one of the things that makes me really happy about how the badger design has turned out is that one of the biggest things that every root faction needs to do is they need to make the game different for all players to the table. This mm -hmm. is like the number one thing. When I, when I look at a fan faction, this is like the biggest mistake that I see people make sometimes. It's also the place where some, you can see that some folks are really dialed into it, where a game that has the Woodland Alliance in it feels different for almost everyone, you know, maybe like 75% of the players. Uh, and if it's doing that, then the faction is really adding something to the game. And the, the Badgers really do change the character of the game for all the other players. Um, so uh, with that, let me see if there are any questions, and then we can go ahead and show folks how they work. I'm answering them. Oh, you are. You Look at you. Uh, nope. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at TTS. So Josh has loaded us in here, uh, and I will bring it up on my screen so I can help uh, direct the little camera around here. Um, okay, so uh, Josh, go ahead and get. Oh, there, I see. We've got the badges are right here. Yeah, and so to finish what I was saying, as yeah, we move ahead. further into it, um, what Josh, I believe Josh or Nick proposed, it was Josh, right? Is that they, um, and and to give them a, a thematic entry point, is that the badgers are getting um, artifacts from the board and they're returning them home, and so a lot of our design then took kind of started shaping around how do these artifacts get on the board and what um and we've tried several iterations of this and then how do they get them off the map to score them for points mm -hmm. yeah I, I got the oath bug Go ahead. For, for those for those of you who followed oaths development we had a moment where we created the relic system and so <laughs> that was just kind of oath was kind of bopping around in my head and so Relics was a natural thing. It's like, okay, they're trying to make infrastructure. Like, what are they actually trying to do? Like, are they missionaries? Like, at one point, we were thinking that they might actually be refugees, but then we were like, that's maybe not something that we can pull off in the system without it seeming too dark or seeming um, just not not dialed in, right, with the way that, like, you score victory points. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so the natural progression from thinking about them as like refugees were, okay, what if they're relics? Like what if, what if these are an order of relic seekers essentially? And so like right now our working title for them is the stone seekers. So they're seeking these, these artifacts that are hidden out in the forests. Yeah, we decided not to go with refugees because it would have felt kind of like when Roger the lovable raccoon is destroying refugee to tokens. Mm -hmm. A little weird, like, well, it, it's <laughs> funny, moment right? for us. <laughs> because, like, Root, Root works in this allegorical space, and there are times when the the allegory can be thinner or thicker. And I think it, this was a, a place where it needed to be thicker. That, like, yeah. we wanted to, to make these, like, these objects get freighted with meaning by the players and not like come in, right. <laughs> come in with, with, with this really fraught, with this really fraught idea. Um, okay. So uh, one thing I just want to mention, uh, so I'll be steering the camera over here and I just want to mention a, a couple things about the pieces that the badgers have. Now, one thing I'll say kind of like right at the start is that like, obviously this is a piece of prototype art. Uh, so don't worry. Um, I guess will be the very first thing. In fact, if you go to game-icons.com, you can find where we get much of our prototype art. And I, I feel like I'm letting out a state secret. Um, so uh, what we have here are the Badger Warriors. Um, they, as far as meeples go, they're on the larger size of the root meeples. So they are a little bit bigger than, than the bird meeples. They're pretty tall. Uh, same thickness, of course, as all the other root meeples. And for the color, you'll see that they're done in silver. And uh, we'll be hopefully showing in, in the coming weeks some of the, 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 the physical samples we have that are gorgeous. But they really have a very distinct look. And then they have uh, two structures. Are we calling these caravans, Josh? Is that right? Right now they're called caravans. Yeah, so we've got these little caravans, these wagons. And then uh, up here is uh, the outpost. Um, and then the way station, the way station, sorry, yeah, way, another oath, another oath card. And then out here on the map, we have the relics, the artifacts now, or, or just the, the stones. We're not really sure what these are going to be. We're working on that. We've got some cool, interesting ideas that we're going to be testing out, but they have these, these pieces, which are going to be really important, which start deployed in the woods. And then out here, they have these, uh, what are they called now? Are just, just re recovery routes? They're or? just recovery recovery routes, yeah. Yep. And so the, these are big pieces that'll probably be like uh, punch board um, markers that kind of point to a clearing, uh, but they show like, you know, a path off the, off, off the map or off the board. Uh, so wait, that, that's what they've got. And then over here, we of course have their... Um, player board. So I'm going to go ahead and just show the player board. I'll make sure that everything's readable. Now, for those of you who are eager to try these folks out, I'm going to encourage you not to waste your afternoon taking screen caps, because as Josh mentioned earlier, we will be releasing a TTS kit imminently sometime this afternoon, and you won't need to like crop this and try to make it work. All right, go ahead, Josh. Talk us through them. All right, so in typical root teaching fashion, we'll just, you know, go through our turn structure. So basically the first thing that happens on the Badger's turn is you're going to get some warriors. So um, the base is you're getting one, you're getting this little trickle of warriors, and they're going to be coming into the map through those recovery routes that, I was, that Cole was talking about before. So you're always going to be getting this, this dribble of warriors from the places that you want to get the relics of to eventually. And then... Um, depending upon what mission you're doing, you might get more warriors. So you'll see up here, there's this little mission uh, box right here. So the a big idea behind the Badger's design is that um, they're sort of telegraphing what they're going to be doing. Um, so the idea here is that uh, at the end of your turn, you're going to be setting one of these missions. So you're just going to stick this marker on the mission that you want to do. Um, and so, for example, if you decided that you set your mission to the recruiting mission, when you recruit, you're going to be getting some more warriors. So depending upon how built out you are on the map, more warriors are going to be coming in through those recovery routes. Um, if you're on different missions, that will give you different benefits, which I'll talk about here in a second. So that's Birdsong. So now we move on to Daylight. You get to craft, um, pretty standard. You get to use your buildings. Um, and then, like I said before, um, if you're set to supplying as a mission, you also get to use your caravans. So this is an interesting thing because um, other factions don't really get to move their crafting pieces around like this. 
Um, and so you're going to be moving your caravans around the map. And if you so if you choose your supplying mission, you'll have a lot of flexibility in terms of being able to craft stuff. Uh, so after we craft, we get to take our actions. So this you know the meat of your turn. Um, so first thing is moving. So as um, Patrick and Paul were saying before, um, the badgers they're cumbersome. So one of their berries up here says that when they move, uh, they can only move one warrior. Um, but there's a couple ways that they can get around that restriction. Um, so uh, if you have a caravan with you uh, in the place that you're moving from, uh, you can move all of your warriors. So if um, as long as you have a caravan, you can you know pack all of your stuff up on that thing and you know go to town. Um, the other interesting thing about the badgers and the way that they move is um, they can basically warp between their way stations. So these way stations are essentially this network building element that you're 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 building up around the board where if you're moving out from a way station, um, you can keep taking moves as long as it brings you to another way station. Um, and that follows all of the normal movement rules. So like you still need to rule all those clearings intermittently and so on. But as long as you have those way stations out there and you have that clear route, you can move multiple times. So their their move is highly restricted unless you've planned things appropriately. That's kind of the that's that's like the the, kind of the through line for the badgers is they're restricted, but if you've planned things, you can do these amazing amazing uh, movements around the board. Uh, and and so there there still. is an important uh, restriction to whether or not you can use way stations, right? Which we'll talk about later. Yep, which I'll talk about yep, here in, in a moment. So then we have uh, we have builds. Um, this is pretty standard. You're just spending a card and you put one of your caravans or a way station uh, in a matching clearing you rule. So pretty standard, um, same as uh, many other root factions work. Um, then we have rescue. So here's another point where this faction uh, does something pretty unique. So rescue is your card draw action. The badgers do not have a standard card draw at the end of their turn. Instead, they have a rescue action. And so rescue is you get to draw one card. Um, but then if you have your mission set to rescuing, you also get to pick off of the discard pile. So what it says is you get to draw the top card of the discard pile if you rule a matching clearing. So for example, if you rule a mouse and there's a mouse on top of the discard pile, you can just pick that mouse up. Um, now, yeah, go on, Cole. one thing I'll say here is that at this stage of design and development, we're kind of like, we have all these little flags that we put up where we're like, okay, we need to make sure that we have the interaction with the lizard's lost soul pile clear, right? Yep, uh, and, exactly. And, but, and so but, like, yeah, go ahead. And so like in this situation, yeah, you're, those lost souls haven't yet filtered out into the discard pile. Yep. So like you are, you are essentially, if you're playing with the lizards, you're going to have this kind of different game where you can no longer say, get a card into the discard pile immediately and filter it back. The lizards lost souls are going to introduce this new wrinkle in the way that uh, mm -hmm. the badgers play. Yep. Um, so rescuing uh, is, um, you know, th there's not really uh, factions out there that can draw off the discard. The only other one is the tinker vagabond really. And even that one is far more restricted. So this can be quite powerful, um, but critically, um, you can't pull birds off of the discard pile because you can't rule, there's no bird clearance. Um, and even though you can count birds as wilds, it doesn't work in reverse. So um, if there are birds up there, you're just gonna have to deal with it. Um, and then finally, we have a bat, just a standard battle action. Um, and as we mentioned before, the badgers are armored um, and so they can take a real beating in battle. They ignore the first hit that they take in battle, regardless of whether they're attacking or they're defending. Um, and that includes from an ambush. So if somebody ambushes you, that first hit from the ambush is going to get soaked up. So they're harder harder to ambush to great effect. Well, and, and you know, that oh, one thing that I feel like I've screwed up, and I'll just say for everybody on the stream, is if, if, I, if someone plays an ambush on me and I... Um, and I soak that hit from the ambush, I won't be soaking any additional hits from the die roll. So it's always just going to be capped at that one soak. But it does mean that ambushes are just a lot less good against the Seekers. Right. It's like there's less ability for you to go, haha, sorry, you can't roll a bunch of hits against me. You're still, like the Badgers will still be there, essentially, to add to your maximum hits. So they're, they're much more resilient in that way. 
Um, so yeah, so once you're done with your actions, you go on to your evening. Um, and this is pretty simple. Pretty much the only stuff that's happening in your evening, you get to choose your mission. So as I said before, um, you're going to be basically telegraphing, uh, you know, what sort of bonus you're going to be getting on your next turn. And so you can just move your mission marker to any of these missions. Uh, and then you discard down to five cards. Um, and so that's basically the way that the badgers work. Now, what we haven't touched on is their relic interaction rules. So uh, they have this nice big chunk over here. Bit, much bigger of a berry ability than we've done previously, but I think uh, I think it's worth it. And and I'll just say um, this, this is a place where like this is very much a working document. So you know a lot of the wording here will be improved. Some of this stuff, like especially for the missions, like because everybody wants to know what the mission is from across the board. Like it's very likely we'll build a graphical aid that can be easily seen across the board for something like a mission. And the, the layout and the relic, well, they might, there might be also be graphical aids for that too. So like all that stuff happens much later in the development and usability. Um, yep. Uh, or yeah, I, I just wanted to kind of like say that in terms of general process, but the actual word wording is pretty far along. Yep. Yeah. No, that is definitely stuff that uh, we're, we're still probably weeks or a month out from, you know, thinking about really, really hard. Um, and so, yes, so we have these relics. Um, and so the idea behind the relics is that, you know, basically anybody can interact with them. This is something that we want all of the players to get into um, and play around with. And so here's the idea. Um, uh, Cole, if you want to go over to sure. the map, it might actually be easier just to demonstrate. Um, so let's say that you're over here. As long as you rule a clearing, you can spend a card that's matching your clearing to pull a relic into that clearing. So like the Badgers rule here, they can go, all right, I'm going to pull one of these relics into my clearing. Um, and to denote that you're protecting it, um, we're, we're still figuring out the, um, the component profiles and stuff like that. But the idea, the working idea is that whatever component we come up with, you're basically going to stick your warrior on to show that you're sure. protecting it, that it's your relic. Um, so you can spend a card to pull a relic in. Then, basically, whenever you move around, um, when you move that warrior, you basically just take that relic with you. Um, so uh, as you as you walk around, you're going to be dragging that relic. And then, basically, what you want to do is get the relic to the right recovery clearing. So all of these white relics, basically, to score them, you're going to need to get them over here to this uh, fox clearing. Likewise, the uh, black relics over here, you're going to need to get over here to this mouse clearing on the other side of the board. And so basically, it's a it's it's a little bit of a pick up and deliver game. You're like trying to get yourself into the right place where you can pick up a relic and get it to where you need to go. Um, and so that's a very basic rundown of um, of those interactions. Um, relics can't be destroyed, so they're not a token, they're not a building. So they are a new component class, which presents some problems for me specifically from a rules writing and usability perspective. Yeah, um, I don't care. But we just, but we, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we just found that making them killable tokens introduced too many weird game mm -hmm. theoretical problems of just like, oh, it's just a boring calculation about well, like when I kill them and when I don't. And, and what often happened with making them killable is that it, they were just worth so much more dead than they were alive. But now that they're indestructible, as soon as they enter the game, if players don't want the Badgers to score, they're going to start hoarding them and stealing them from the Badgers. So, you know, just uh, breaking the explanation just slightly, uh, you look at this map and you think like, oh, well, this is a very easy route. But the problem is that some of these relics might be taken by this by a faction up here and moved for safekeeping to a farther spot. Or another faction could get a big army right here, and then the Badger's going to be confronted with, how are they going to get around that army? Exactly. Um, and so critically, um, once you get them to these recovery clearings, you're only going to be able to score that relic if you, as the Badger's, or if somebody else um, is, is doing it, if they rule it. So one of you actually has to rule that recovery clearing as well to get that relic out of the woodland. Um, and so even though the distances look short, in practice, they it's it's can be pretty difficult depending upon what the map looks like. Mm -hmm. um, we can hop back over to the board to um, finish this explanation. Sure. Um, so uh, I basically explained movement and getting the relics back. And so there are a couple couple more things here to explain. So when you get your 
relic back, um, you're going to score two victory points, and the badgers are going to score one. And so this means that, you know, if you're another faction, you know, you'll be scoring one up on the badgers. But if you're the badgers, the badgers are going to be scoring three. So it's a pretty stark difference between the badgers getting it and another faction getting it. Um, also, when you deliver it, you're going to be getting a bonus based on what the badger's current mission is. So, for example, if they're exhibiting um, currently, then you, as the person who's delivering it, you're going to get another victory point for doing so. So the badgers can sort of incentivize other factions to deliver relics for them by setting their mission, you know, trying to align their mission in terms of like, okay, what bonuses do I want for my turn? As well as like, what are the missions that are going to incentivize other factions to do my dirty work for me, or at least partially. <laughs> so, so setting that mission is both a way to plan your own turns uh, and to interact with other players. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and then finally, the last point I want to bring up is the the movement. So, um, like I said before, uh, just as the badgers can jump between way stations, um, other players can do so as well. So, like if you have a relic, you can use the badgers' way stations, that infrastructure that they've built up, to move around the map more efficiently. The only restriction here is is that as a different player, you have to have a relic. There's no there's no free rides on the Badger's way stations like the Badgers get. You have to you have to at least be acting like you're acting in the Badger's interests. So, um, and that's that's the Badgers. Um, that's that's I, literally every rule about the Badgers. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, you know, and I'll I'll just talk through a couple of. Um a couple of ramifications of some of these rules. Uh, so one thing is that the relics, which can be controlled by other players here, I'll go ahead and just drop another faction in so we have some some pieces. Um, we'll get a couple cats in the mix. So uh, one critical thing is that uh, a cat, let's say a cat goes, you know, we'll put these in the woods here. A cat could spend a mouse card to bring this relic down right and like and, and be holding that relic now that i guess the cat could spend another mouse card to bring it down but critically this relic isn't be controlled by the cat no one's protecting it because you can only have one, one warrior protect one relic now exactly. what what this means is later if i send another cat to pick it up and i'm marching around trying to get to the right spot if somebody kills this warrior they could potentially take control of this relic um, and so it's yeah, really... and a very funny implication there too is if you're playing in a game with the lizards, for example, even though the lizards aren't really that great at movement in general, the fact that they can convert warriors is a very potent um, weapon because they can go, oh, I want to convert one of those cats over there to a lizard. Now the lizards have a relic that they can work with. So even though the the lizards are seriously disadvantaged in some ways in this. Um, in, in handling the relics, they are seriously advantaged in other ways. Uh, and then uh, someone asks, so th there's a number of questions here, Josh, which I'm just going to kind of read to you and you can kind of answer them as a batch. Um, so, uh, do, 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 do. Um, so do they have to spend cards to take relics from dead cats? No, um, it's, it's not an action to take control of it. In terms of who picks, though, who picks which warrior dies, that follows the standard rules that are already in place. Which yep, the, the... that follows the standard rule. Um, yeah, so like if somebody battles you and you have, uh, say, a white relic and a black relic, and you want to hold on to the white one, sure, you can do, you can do that. Um, obviously, if they kill both your warriors, then mm -hmm. you know you've lost your relics. But um, <laughs> but yes, it, it follows the normal rules of the defender, uh, the, or the, the sorry, the person taking the hits will will get yep. to choose. Uh, the so there are a couple questions. You know, can, can the lizards use the way stations? They definitely can. Um, the uh, the can you talk about how the badgers move normally again? I've there are a couple questions like that that have zoomed through sure. the chat. Yeah, so normally, uh, so let's say that the badgers have a couple warriors over here. Normally, you can only move one badger at a time, one warrior at a time. So like this guy, you could go like, okay, I'm moving over here. However, if you have a caravan with you, you can do a normal move. Um, critically, that caravan comes with you. So like these two right here, I could move them over there. So you're restricted in that you can only build a limited number of caravans, uh, like you can only have three caravans out at a single time, and it's going to cost you 
a card to get another caravan out there, mm -hmm. um, which the badgers are pretty card limited. You know, they're going to need to do some good rescue missions in order to keep their card flow going. So killing a caravan of a badger is, is they're not going to like that at all. <laughs> um, so uh, some folks have asked about setup and reach. Uh, their reach value is probably going to be seven or eight. Um, it's, you know, one of the interesting things about playing the badgers is like you are, so they're a very strange mixture of being highly immobile. It's very hard to move around and also very mobile. And the way I tend to think about them is I think they are the most nomadic faction that has buildings, maybe. It's the right way to put it. Because you will tend, at least when I played the, the, uh, this morning, I found myself kind of having two teams that had to kind of rescue each other and play tag team to sort of like make it so they could move around the map. And so I felt like I had a high degree of mobility, which is a really important, especially late game mobility, which is a very important element of reach. But on the other hand, uh, I, I couldn't like sprawl out very easily so I, I i likened the experience of playing them to i felt like i was playing like oregon trail or an exploration game where i had my little team and i'm like okay i've got this white this white artifact this relic can i get it back to here and in order to do that this guy might have to go on a giant adventure to, to make that to make that work um, in terms of the exact piece and all that stuff, we, we don't know yet. We are, we're working on a couple different options to figure out exactly how we want it to work. Obviously, they're not going to be concave ghost stones that your pieces will slide off of. But for TTS, you can stack them like that and move them around. Uh, someone asked about the color significance of the, um, of the stones. The main thing is that there are two types. One of them, the white type, is going to the white re recovery site, which, remember, the badgers have to rule in order to, to get things off on it. And then the other, the black stones, of course, go to the black re re recovery site. Um, the, okay, so then someone asked about setup. Um, we're still working on setup. Uh, basically, the Badgers and Josh, well, actually, here, Josh, why don't, why don't you show how they set up? Sure, and, so the, the, the current working idea, and the, as Cole mentioned, this is something that is, you know, the, the setup is probably the point that we're sticking on the most right now that we're trying to figure out. So the basic idea is that, um, uh, so you, you need to put down your recovery clearance. And the idea is, is that you can put, uh, you start by putting one uh, in any edge clearing that another player hasn't chosen is like where they're starting. And then the second one, you have to put at least, you have to put four uh, or more, depending upon the map, at least four clearings away. So like if I put it here, I'm going to put it here, for example. Then what you do is you take your relics and you evenly distribute them between the forests that are adjacent to the recovery clearing. Yep, of the opposite. Um, critically, the, of the opposite type, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, the black ones are going to go by the white one, and then the white ones are going to go by the black one. Um, I don't know where the other ones went, so I'm just going to clone these. <laughs> so like that. Um, then you're going to get three badgers and a caravan and a way station. Right now we're thinking in any clearing that isn't adjacent to like a forest that has relics in it. That's my, mm -hmm. that, that is my current thinking about how that works. Wait, I'm sorry. Say that again. I, I just didn't hear. The, the idea that your, your oh, clearing I see. where your stuff yep. is starting in isn't adjacent to any of the forests where the relics started. With. Yep, yep, yep. And, what, what, you know, what, and then that will be like their sole homeland place. And then uh, yep. the, 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 as for folks who've been paying attention to the, the setup draft rules and stuff we're working on, these are things that are going to be fine-tuned and developed as we are like figuring out exactly what is going to work for all the combinations. So for instance, and this has come up a little bit in the Discord, you know, someone asks, like, can the Vagabond hold a relic? And the answer right now is like, well, no, it's not a warrior, but probably something eventually. I'm not sure exactly what the interaction will be, unless you've written Yeah, that cur rule. currently I have the rule written as a warrior or a pawn, but there's a couple important um, consequences of this. One is that the Vagabond's only ever going to be able to hold one thing ever, um, mm -hmm. because the Vagabond is just one piece. The other important thing is that um, the Vagabond won't actually be able... So this is a funny thing that is probably oh, going to yeah. be working out. Um, the Vagabond currently can't, like, use... The recovery zones. Because... ...as well. And, like, there, there are some weird things about recovery that 
are very different for the Vagabond and may be broken that yeah. we may have to work out. But the Vagabond is always is like, I think of the Vagabond often in terms of figuring out rule stuff as just the problem child of like, you, you write the rules for everybody and then you go look at the Vagabond and go like, okay, how do we, how do we make sure that the Vagabond actually works here? So yeah. I'm not too particularly worried about rules for the Vagabond at this point. Uh, someone asked about relics still count as pieces, so they can't just can't drag them into their keep, right? They can drag them to their keep because the pieces are being moved, not placed. That'd be my Correct. ruling. Yeah, the keep, unless... the... <laughs> oh yeah, the, the keep, yeah, the, the recovery specifically says move. Um, so yes, if you're at a clearing with the keep, it's totally fine. Just move them in there. Yep, yep, yep. And the, the Vagabond, frankly, has plenty of things to do. <laughs> <laughs> they don't. They don't need another thing to do. Um, yeah, and so you know, some some folks have asked about how this works uh, with, with two player. You know, the, the real intent here, and we we've just entered this stage of development, is to make this uh, make this faction and the warlord faction really sing together and be great two player um, matches, along with the help of the minor factions, and then uh, to also make sure that the badger plays well against. Uh, you know, the duchy and the eerie and the cats and that all of those factions also play well against uh, the, the, the badger. So our hope is, you know, for folks who could get this box, if you own Underworld 2, suddenly you have five factions that all work in the two player setting really well against each other with the help of the minor factions. So that, that's one of the, the big kind of design and development goals uh, for this new content. The minor factions are, I'm very excited with how like, the two player games we've played, it's just been like, I'm like, oh, this is, this matchup is, would be like hard. Or like, there's, you know, like from turn two, we see there's going to be a problem. If the minor factions weren't there, there'd be a problem with the gameplay. But because of the minor factions, we're able to balance the game really well. So I've been really enjoying it. Uh, I'll comment about the Badgers. Um, we played a game this morning with the WA as me and then uh, the, um, Gosh, the cats, the badgers, and the was the last faction, uh, birds, eerie. eerie birds. Yep, we're in the game, and I it was hard for me to move I, by basically by the time I got to moving, able to move with the wa any of the relics. I was like, well, I like they're all gone, so I can't I can't help them do that. And of course, there's been some changes since then, so um, that yep. might change. And but... likewise, uh, the um, wa game is an interesting one because, as Cole mentioned before you know, the the goal number one is, like, make sure that the game feels different for everybody. And so for the WA, That's what I'm example, getting to. Yeah, yeah. You, you can go for it if you're getting to that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and so what had happened then was because of them all delivering their relics, they had all moved to the corners of the board, and suddenly I was able to have a lot of control over the center of the board, which is the WA was, was enormous for. And just with sympathy, I was able to block the motion of the relics quite effectively, so... Um, it, it did it did transform into a very interesting game. Very low scoring for me, and then suddenly very high scoring. So it was a lot of fun. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and probably the, the moles will not be able to move relics into the burrow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but you but, can't. I mean, that's already in the rules, because you can't move oh, that's pieces right. from another, yeah, from yeah. another faction into the burrow. So. Yep. Yeah. Oh, whoosh, whoosh. We got our... Yep, got, got rules problem basis. already solved right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Future proof. Uh, <laughs> yep, yep. We had, uh, we had a, a funny instance of that happening where... Um, one of the things about minor factions is when you're controlling them, they count for rule uh, so that, you know, if you control like the cat minor faction, it doesn't stop you from moving the cats. Right. Seemed like a pretty reasonable thing. And then I had this moment of terror where I thought for a second that the the uh, duchy's sway was based on having a rule. But thankfully, Josh had the brilliant foresight or whoever to add the, the condition that there had to be a duchy warrior in that clearing to count for uh for presence or something or maybe it was just a duchy piece i can't remember uh but it just it was a great moment of like oh thank goodness we've already covered the, this this interaction this problem yeah trying to future proof for root is really interesting because like you know when we first made root you know i don't think that any of us were like oh it's gonna blow up like this big <laughs> <laughs> and so you know uh one thing that i'm very um, excited about in going into this expansion is like, all right, so we're making these relics and it might be another piece uh, piece class. Like, mm -hmm. how do we sort of like rationalize some of our like really deep golden rule level stuff to just make everything a lot e like click together uh, a lot better? And in practice, that's not going to change anything about how the factions work. 
but mm -hmm. hopefully will create sort of like a new foundation for the last, you know, however many expansions we want to do, we can sort of walk into those expansions and know that there's like a really, really strong foundation that's yeah. fully future proof for those. You know? Yeah. And, and it's one of those things that like you almost, you know, you, you almost can't like be done with, with a faction until all, you know, all the factions that can exist within the system. And like all exactly. the different piece types. One one thing that I, I've mentioned before, I don't know if I mentioned it on the stream, but I'll mention it again, is uh, the lizards have this r r revealing mechanism where they reveal cards from their hands and then pull them back into their hands. And when we were working on the lizards, I thought that was just going to be like a lizard thing. And then when we were working on the duchy, uh, you know, a year and a half later, it's it became a duchy thing too. So on the rules side, we had to, like Josh lifted those rules out of the lizard section made it a general term, like the notion of revealing a card. And then we were able to like restructure the rules to make them a little bit more powerful. And, you know, with every printing of root, we, we go into the rules and try to just tighten up things like that and really just keep building up and making them stronger. Yeah. Exactly. And then if we do change a rule, it's our job to gaslight you into remembering it the correct way. <laughs> yeah, precisely. <laughs> um, all right. Let me see if there are any questions we are getting on to time and we've and i'm sure folks want to actually play this faction so we'll be we'll, we'll be heading back to our desks and getting the, this file out uh if you would like to try the badgers uh you should join the woodland warriors discord and somebody can feel free to put a link to the discord uh in the the, the chat uh we've been kind of like showing a lot of uh, little early previews for that content um I want to, I also demand, sorry, Garrick, I, Garrick, I also demand a rulebook stream from Josh. I just want to watch him work. Um, thank you very much, Siri, for putting that uh, link to the, to the Discord. Um, what we are planning to do uh, for the uh, roll-up to the Kickstarter and some of the time, uh, and a little bit while the Kickstarter is underway, is uh, we will be talking in a few weeks and showing you some more about the minor factions and the setup, which we'll show, be showing you in our next uh, design stream whenever we manage to schedule it. And then uh, during the actual Kickstarter, we'll be releasing uh, more fulsome uh, print and play kits. We'll do a print and play kit for the, the new expansions bundled together with some of their art. And then we'll also have a print and play kit later in the campaign that will have the, the setup and the minor faction rules so that people can play those. Of course, we'll be doing physical kits, not physical, but uh, print at home kits and also um, saved objects that you can use in your TTS games. Uh, so before we take off, I just want to uh, ask the, the chat if there are any other questions. We'll be happy to, to do our best to answer them. Um, oh boy, so there's a here. question about, is there any progress in Void Lich Coal? Not yet. I've got to get, I've got to escape the woodland before I can go back to working <laughs> in Void Lich. I have it all yeah. like nicely organized in a box and I, I typed up a little draft of the rules and I cannot wait to like jump headfirst back into it. Um, but not yet. Yeah. And I'm phasing out design too, and because um, obviously Josh has got this well in hand, yep. um, and and I we're, we're I'm excited because we're both branching off to work on separate new IP or and new new large games. I'm now and I'll I'll be coming back to do content with the mm -hmm. Void Lich. So, but yeah, I'm very excited for the next couple of months because I'm I feel like I'm out of the first year of baby. The move is over. I can now focus on work again. <laughs> yeah, there, there is, there is, we're, we're not we're not buying benefits. You know, like, right. like well, things are a little bit more. Stable. There's a funny thing that's gonna happen. We're like Patrick and I do these like monthly design streams on the first or second <clears throat> Tuesday or wherever it is, and those design streams are gonna keep happening. But like after next month, they're probably not gonna be about root anymore. They're gonna be about whatever weird stuff we're working on. And then we might have Josh Nick streams to keep everybody up to pace on where the root development is as we get all that launched. Uh, all that launched it in. Uh, anything on Badger setup? If you go back in the stream, uh, Merck's off, you can find stuff about Badger setup. Uh, do, do, do. Will, uh, will Root 6E be in a slightly larger box that contains new expansion? No. We have the Root uh, box size is the Root box size. It will not be staying. The, the question about the big box is something we, we address all the time, and I direct you to any number of uh, posts we've made on it. Or the FAC. Or, or, or the, yeah, it got an item in the fact. So I hope, yeah, yeah, you can, you can go, you can go take a look at it there. Uh, I think there's another question I wanted to answer. Oh, yeah, yeah, go, go ahead, go ahead. 
Um, let me go ahead and you, I'm going to refine it. So, uh, so ahead. someone asked about theme and flavor of relics beyond black and white tokens, probably not like special powers, uh, as tokens, they will be more intricate than a ghost stone. I promise you. But, um, the, the, the game space of root root is such that like, I can't put any oath relic design stuff in it. Uh, that kind of stuff lives in oath. So, you know, you gotta eat. Sometimes you can't have your cake and eat it too. Uh, are we going to get a full playthrough stream of oath, the physical copy? Yes, at some point. Um, I'm not sure yet. I, I've promised people a solo playthrough, which I will uh, try to get together sometime fairly soon, maybe within a week or two. Uh, and then I would love to do a studio play, but w- we have to see. There's a lot of stuff happening on right now. Um, and let's see if there are any other random questions that I'm catching here. Patrick, did you find your lost question? Yeah, but I lost it again. Oh, no. <laughs> what's the title cole uh, are we gonna announce it yet should we save it i thought we were are we saving it that's fun i'm I think not sure we, that we've actually agreed yet but yeah, yeah i think we, we we should save it i think we have one but i think it might wait till next week uh release the title we're saving it um okay and then just assume um, it's root the badgy 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 badgies are, are, are the rats Badger. doing okay the rats are awesome the rats are great, yeah. Uh, yeah, the yep. rats are super good. Uh, Ahoy is, uh, I know Nick is thrilled to get to work on Ahoy. He'll be doing that after uh, Root is done. So Ahoy is slightly delayed. It, delayed. And then when are we doing a minor faction stream? Uh, fairly soon, within a couple weeks, I believe. I can't remember uh, what our internal calendar looks like, but pretty soon. We should go right in. We should roll right that one right into a play because it's pretty fast. Oh yeah, yeah. The, and yeah. We, we can just start playing it and, and talk through talk through how it works. And you um, can see who the superior root player is, Cole or Patrick. I've been losing a lot of games of root. I really thought I had y'all this morning, and then Patrick just got it, got, <laughs> like, nice. in democker terms, he won like on the nose or whatever. It was very. Uh, very close no, I was thing. at thirty four, but. Oh uh, really? Oh, yeah, I, thought, I, I thought I thought you skidded into thirty there at the end. No, 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 no. I had I had four more points on the board that I just didn't score. But um, yeah, it was pretty cool because it was I was WA was six to the Badgers sixteen at one point, and then I had two surges and I caught up, which was pretty fun. That was pretty fun to watch. I, and I, I really have, because the center of the board was open. So it, again, I, I have never felt the sympathy as keenly as I felt it playing against you as the Badgers, where I was like, I need to get this thing through your territory. But I'm mm-hmm. so, but cards hurt me so bad I just can't afford it. So I was having to like go around like the uprisings like block, uh, and it, was, it made the board. <laughs> so the was just burning. Yeah. And the last time we played minor factions, uh, Cole like we played birds versus cats, and it was phenomenal because you like surged ahead. You were like at twenty eight one point, mm-hmm. right? Yep, I was right right on the edge. And then it just barely clipped your wings. It was like yeah. twenty eight thirty at the end, and it was it was we were right on the edge of our seats. So that was that was a good. I really enjoyed that. It was a good game. Uh, I'm so, ex- very excited about the minor factions, people. I got to tell you, I've said like, oh, two players fine, um, and Cole likes it, but I mean, I I you know I was kind of take it or leave it. But now with the minor factions, I am I'm right there. It feels like a good. It feels like that tight tension that like a good game of Blue Moon or or. Uh, or even magic has. Yeah, it's just, I, I it's, had. It's very tech for tech. I'm. Uh, I think Nick and I were, were playing with the minor factions a few days ago, and I like looked at him and I was like, I think I'm into two player root. Yeah. Like I yeah. think I think I'd like choose to play this <laughs> over you know like a war game or something something else. Um, so uh, are we doing stuff for high player counts? We'll talk about that later. Maybe um, there, there's some exciting stuff kind of in the works in the back end. Uh, last question I'm going to take right now is. Uh, the question about the direwolf and minor factions, I'll just say again that they, they kind of do it at their own schedule. We don't know when that stuff's coming, but we imagine it is coming at some point. Uh, and we are happy that they are implementing the winter map soon, uh, which is super exciting because I love the winter map. I think it's great. And it, yeah, yeah. it is a very different type of route for people. I mean, it's, I, I'm always amazed by the number of people who we see at cons who are like, oh, I love route. I've played it 15 times, but I've never played the winter map. You know what I mean? Like you just yeah. you never flip the board over. So I'm excited for folks to, to see how wild it is. Um, the minor factions will be in this expansion mostly, but that's that's stuff that we'll talk about later. Okay, I think uh, we've caught the majority of the questions. Any final remarks, Josh or Patrick? Nope, I'm just excited to see how people react. Yeah. So again, uh, hop to the Discord. You can find the invite. 
uh, the Woodland Warriors invite somewhere up up in the stream chat. Uh, it's also if you just search Woodland Warriors, you'll you'll end up at the link pretty easily. And we will be uh, posting that that little print and play kit very soon, or the, the TTS kit. And you guys can start playing the Badgers today if you wanted to. And uh, for everyone at the team, we're, I'm super happy uh, that we're able to show this stuff to you guys. And I cannot wait, cannot wait for everyone to see the Kickstarter. It's so exciting. I, it's felt so long since we've done a root Kickstarter. And oh, it's I, been two years. It's been two years. And I, I just can't, <laughs> I can't wait for you all to see it. I think it's going to be really fun. Uh, so yeah. take care, everyone, and have a lovely uh, Tuesday. All right. Take care.